Hi folks, Terry here. I um, decided to do a little reloading video really. I like watching them on YouTube myself. Um, so I thought I'd just do one and just go for it. It's not George Lucas or nothing, but there you go. Right, what I'm reloading today is 223 Lepore cartridges. And these are virgin um, cases, these are. One off. First thing I'm going to do with them is to uniform the primer pockets. So I've got a K&M tool here in my drill. Um, basically, the cutter goes in like so, drill on, and the bottom of the case bottoms out on this flat surface here. So you can't overdo it. It's sort of set at that. So that's what I do first. And then... Where's she gone? I've got the flash hole deburrer tool, which I also put in my drill. She goes through the neck, like so. This brass cone centralises everything. Drill turns, cleans out the, the um, flash hole from the inside and Again, you can't overdo it because once it's done its cutting or, or whatever it's got to take away, it bottoms out on this on this ridge here. So you, you can't go too far. And the drill is, the actual drill piece is slightly chamfered just above this ridge. So it sort of gives the edge of the flash hole on the inside. It gives it like a little... Um, slope a little a little roundish edge just just to make it all nice there so when your primer goes off it's it's all uniform everything's the same on each case right so what I'll do I'll just do like a couple um, just to show you this particular procedure now th this is Lepore brass so it's it's made with a high high spec but you'll be surprised how much you shavings you still get out of this brass so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my phone over here so you can see what I'm doing better and I'll sort of show you the the, the brass that actually comes out so just give me a tick just to move things about I'll just put you over here okay so what I do, I've just got this on speed one, you haven't got to go mad with it. Um, just basically locate her, get her pushed in, so she's sort of like so. And then and then off you go for a little while. And if I don't know if you can see, but I'll try and do it close. If, if you sort of watch closely. Now when I pull this out, I'm hoping you'll be able to see, yeah, there's some there, Br the brass shavings coming out. Right, that's bottomed out now. So, that's one done. I don't know if you can see the shavings there. A little pile there, I don't know if you can or not, but it did need doing. So I'm quickly going to change this cutter over and put the flash hole tool in. Right, so what we do, she goes in here and you fiddle around till you feel the cutter drop through the actual flash hole. You then push this brass locator up till it till it's just gone into the neck and it makes sure the shaft is nice and straight. And what I do is I just put it on the side of my reloading bench here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try and... That's it. Once it's located, make sure it's located properly, the, the drill bit through the flash hole. And then all I do is just very, I don't put loads of pressure on this because you don't need to. You just give it, give it a little go.
and that's that's all you need to do with that let's see if anything's come out of this one and a couple of little bits so there wasn't a lot there wasn't a lot in that one um, but I've done another hundred of them I'm on the second hundred now and they vary with with the flash hole sometimes you get nothing come out and so, and sometimes you'll you'll get more so it just goes to show that they're not bang on uniform all these cases like the little pull cases they're, they're great cases um, but but they're not bang on and if you want them bang on this is the, this is what I do so I'm um, because I'm just a fussy git so I'm going to get on with all of these I've showed you I've done one of them obviously I'm going to do the other hundred because I've already done a hundred of them um, and then the next stage um, that I'm going to do with them is um, I'm just going to go through um, and just neck size these and then I'm going to make sure they're all the same length so I'm going to trim them down as well but I'll do that um, on, on the next video um, yeah so I'll see you soon let's just say this is part one okay see you then hi there Terry here sort of part two as you've seen in part one, I've done the flash holes on these new Lepore 223 cases and I've uniformed the primer pockets. Next stage, I'm going, I'm just going, what I'm going to do is I said I was going to neck size them, but I'm actually decided to full length size them because there was a bit of variation in the primer pockets and that, so I thought, yeah, it's not going to hurt. For, for the first time, I'm just going to full length size them so they're all totally uniform. And then after that, that once they've been fired, obviously, um, I'm just going to neck size them because they'll be formed to my chamber then. So, right, for the next stage then, I'll just turn the camera around a little bit so you can see what I'm doing on my press. Right, this is a classic Lee press it's a cast press solid lump of kit this is a really good press this I'm really impressed with it so this is the press that comes with the inserts it's like a, a quick change inserts so I'm just going to pop that in first like so let's get it a click in that's it Right, and then I've got my um, full length sizing die. This is a a, a Reading. Uh, hey, hang on a minute. It's a Reading Deluxe die set. Again, good stuff. What I'm going to do is just um, screw this in. I'll show you how the quick release works in a, in a minute. Right, before what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the ram all the way up and just, just hold it lightly with my thumb so it's all the way up. And then I'm going to turn this die down till it. So I'm just releasing the collar for a minute just so it just feel a bit of resistance. It is just barely touching the ram. Now I'm just going to tighten the collar down. And then I'm going to do this little Allen key up to lock that in position. I knew I should have put my glasses on for this bit. I will do for the actual powder reloading, obviously. Okay. We're barely touching, which is how I want it. Now what I'm going to do is all the cases that you saw in the last video that I've um, uniformed the primer pockets and done the flash holes, I'm going to put them all into this plastic freezer bag basically so just let me tip these in to that bag and I'll show you what I'm going to do next 
My home has got wide screen camera lenses or anything, so just trust me that I'll just tip the whole lot in the bag. This goes over there. And I'm going to lay this um, bag down on my bench behind the camera. Just flatten out the cases in the bag and I've got some one shot, Hornady one shot case lube which I'm going to just put a few squirts in on top of the cases and obviously in the bag as well itself which I'm doing now so one two three four five six I've done six squirts now I'm going to pick the bag up which you can see which has got the lube spray in it and I'm just going to manipulate it with my hands to get all that that lube over all the cases Okay, so all those cases are well coated now. So you put the bag back down there. Okay. Right, I'm going to lower the ram down, and obviously my shell holder I've got in here for a for two two three. We're not going to be popping any fired primers out, obviously, because um, this is virgin. So here we go. In she goes. Right, I don't know if you can see. I'll just move the camera so perhaps you can see a bit better. Right, in she goes. All the way down. That's nice. Out she comes. And what I do is I just give them half a rotation and then put them back through again I heard somewhere on the internet that this is good to keep the the, the necks um, in the right position basically can't think of the word at the moment so that's one done Half a turn and again all the way down seems to be doing more of the neck than anything else because this there's not like I say these cases are really they're made to a high spec so there's there's not a lot of variation in them but I just want to get those necks all the same because I want them all right so when I so they're all expanded so that when I put them in my cutter to trim them down, I they'll all be at the same length. So yeah, this is this particular part all done. So join me again for when I get on the cutter. So end of part two. See ya. Hi folks, on the second video I was going to let let you know how this quick release worked um, on my full length sizing die. Um, you know how it works in relation to the cast press, the lee cast press and I, I, forgot, I forgot to say so I'll, I'll say now and show you now um, the die actually goes into a, a comp oh, let me show you it goes into this sleeve, it's a special sleeve for the lee press it's the quick re release sleeve and Basically, my die is now set. I can take this die in and out really quickly and use it for the same procedure um, when I do the cases again. So this will go back in in the reading box with with this still attached because it's all set to go exactly where I want it. Now, 
I'll just show you how this works. You just locate the sides here which aren't threaded. You'll see it starts to drop in a minute. There we go. And it bottoms out on this little button here. But it's not fully down yet. So you hold that button down and locate that button because it's spring loaded. It pops up in a little groove. There we go. In, in the side of that uh, quick release component component there's a little bit of movement right to left on the button here but that doesn't matter because the thread in in here is a uh, horizontal so the movement right and left it's not like if it was threaded normally you know it will go down a bit if you turn it to the right and up a touch if you turn it to the left because because they're they're flat it doesn't go anywhere but everything's locked there so that's a lock unit and that's all set for the procedure I showed you so again you know it's you, you just pop it out so you haven't got to basically screw it up and down and set it again on the grub screw like you would on a different press it's just a lot quicker and it's all set now where I want it so I just thought I'd show you that so lovely stuff next um, video I'll be trimming those cases so I will um, talk to you soon. Bye. Hi folks, vid three, trimming these cases down. Now, this is the important bit really, where you've really got to take your time and make sure everything's spot on because um, it could become dangerous otherwise. So this is, you've really got to concentrate on this. I've looked in my reloading manual um, and I know that the maximum overall length of the case should be no more than 1.760 in length all the way. I've measured these up, obviously it's virgin brass, Lepore brass, um, and they're varying between, not a lot, but they're varying between sort of 1.751 and 1.753. So what I want to do is I want all of these to be the same to start with, okay? Um, so I've set my Reading trimming lathe up to um, 1.751, which is the shortest overall length of all of these 200 cases that I've prepped up so far. So I'm going to trim them all to that, okay? Some, hardly any will come off, and on others a bit more will come off. I've got my um, the little guide in here. You can change the guides. Um, I'll just tip this down a bit. You can see you've got a selection here for different calibers. But I've got the one in here for 223. I'm not going to go into how you set all this up because there's videos out there on, on the internet that actually show you really in depth how to get all this bang on. So I just wanted to show you the, the process really. Right, so we're all set to go and I'll just show you how it works basically. Again, this, this is a brilliant little trim of this. So I'll stand up for this. Basically, you put your neck in the pilot and while you're holding it there, you push this ram forward so it just touches the back of the case you push this button down and turn and see that locates and you turn the handle a touch more and that locks the case into it okay and you let go of the button and away you go right that's bottomed out there I'll just kind of move this over a bit so you can see the handle for a minute. That's bottomed out, okay? This bit here is bottomed out on there and I've set it to do that. So I can't push it anymore. Let's go back to here again. Okay, right, that's done. Now, to get it out, you push, hold the button down till it locates. Just half, just a tiny half a turn undo on the handle. Pull that back and that comes out. So what I do next is I've got a little brush here that comes with the lathe 
and I'm just going to in and out with this okay just to clean out any shavings that might just be on the inside of the neck there so I'll plonk that there I'll just do a few just to show you exactly how this works in you go push the button down turn the handle locate tighten up off you go so a little bit more came off of that one that's bottomed out now undo away you go let's, let's just give this a brush out number three tighten her up let it go undo I'll do two more so I don't want you falling asleep tightened up see nothing hardly anything came off of that one but a tiny bit did so I know when I've done this process they're all going to be the same length tighten her up a little bit more off of that one okay right that's one. Oh, I forgot to brush that one out okay that's then brushed up and I'm just going to move you over here to show you what I do with them next okay so I'll trim them down and now what I want to do is deburr the insides and outsides of the neck just in case there's any like there's this very slight ridge there not a lot but a little so off we go, I'm going to do the inside first and what I do is I do them all the same so I'm just going one, two, three, four, five, six and I'm not pushing hard either same on the outside, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's done. That goes there. Next one, one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 The reason I'm doing six is because six is enough. And each case has had six goes with this, basically. So again, we're trying to keep everything as near enough the same as possible in these cases. So if I'd have done eight turns, who knows a couple of tiny little fragments might have been removed more than what was on the other one in other words you'd be starting to eat into the actual um, neck itself which you don't want to do we just we just want to take any burr off the edges caused by the trimming right this is the last one one two three four five six one two three four five six Okay, so that's five of them done. I've got the rest of the 195 to do. Stroll on, but um, next they're going to go going to be cleaned. So that's for the next video. So I'll see you in a little while. Bye. Hi, Terry on vid number four. This is cleaning these prepped up cases. Now they've still got some one shot case loops still on them from the full length sizing so I want to clean these all up properly so I've got my sonic cleaner here this is a Hornaday lock and load sonic cleaner it's the two litre one um, I'm just going what I'm going to do is just clean these up now so I've put all those cases into this little tray I'll just put the tray down here for the moment now I'm going to put in some cleaning solution 
It's Hornaday One Shot Sonic Clean Solution for cartridge cases. So I know it's I know it's a capful. So I sort of judge this. I've done it so many times. I know roughly how much goes in. And if you put a little bit more in, it doesn't hurt. Right. So that's in there. I'm now going to put a bit of boiled. I boiled this water in the kettle. Now dis you can use dill distilled water um, but I've run out basically so boiled water is fine it, it, it just boils a lot of the contaminants out of the water that might tarnish the brass so right let's tip I'll just tip a little bit of this in now this isn't boiled water as in it's boiling hot it's just warm okay Right, I've put a little bit in there just to mix the solution in with the water and then I'm going to put this basket back in with the cartridges. In she goes. And then I'm just going to continue topping up with the warm water till the cases are covered. cases are covered and just a little bit more and then you'll, you'll see that there's some some of the case necks are sticking out the top so I'm just sort of pushing them down you'll see one everything underwater really actually I can, I've got some more warm water here that I've boiled up so I'm just going to top it up a bit more there's a maximum line that you can fill this and I can see it and I know where it is and it's about there. So all them cases are submerged now. Put the little handles down on the basket. Pop the lid back up or put, pop the lid on. Okay, she's ready to go. Now you've got a few settings on here. Again, there's a video that shows how to set this up you know inside out if you if you like and um i'm just because i'm just giving you a, a rough idea of what i do there's no point me really going into it in detail um like like my trimming my reading trimming lathe again it's i could spend 20 minutes 25 minutes just talking about each thing so i'm just sort of going to try and skip through it for you so what i'm going to do now is um, it's on normal at the moment, so this button here is an up and down. It goes from 5 minutes, 10, 15, 20, 25, so 30 minutes is its maximum um, that it will clean for. Um, I'm going to do them for 30 minutes, um, and, then, and then they'll be fine. Everything will be lovely and clean in there. So I'm going to turn her on. And it'll, you'll hear it degassing first. And what degassing means, you, you, you'll, hear, you'll hear the sonic cleaner come on and it'll pulse on and off, on and off. And what that does is it gets rid of any air bubbles or trapped air that might be inside the cases so the solution can flow freely inside the cases. And then it'll just go on to full, um, the full cleaning and, and then the degassing noise that you hear will just stay on permanently. So off we go. Turn her on. I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds a bit like um, 10 bees in your crash helmet, if you like. So I've set this for 30 minutes and it's counting down now. When it gets down to zero, it'll just turn off it's automatically. So I'm not going to make you watch this for half an hour, not that you would anyway, so I'll come back to you when it's finished cleaning. Okay, nice one. See you soon. Okay, half an hour's up, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to juggle things around a little bit here. I'm just going to move this unit over here and put my little bowl here. And I'm going to switch the unit off now and unplug it. Okay, right, I'm going to take the lid off. 
Let's shake the condensation out in there because of the warm water. Put that down here. I usually do this process in the kitchen sink. I'll, put, I'll clean the kitchen sink, um, just make so it's nice and clean. And then I'll sort of fill half of it up with warm, boiled water. And I'll get this um, tray with the cases in. I'm just going to take the tray out now of the sonic cleaner. Just let the water and cleaning solution just drain out the tray a bit into the sonic cleaner. And then I'm going to put the tray in this bowl here. Yeah, they're lovely. Feel like Goldfinger, they are shining. That's lovely. Right, and then what I'm going to do, just let me get rid of this cleaner out of the way to give, give myself a bit more room. Like I say, I usually do this in the kitchen, but um, my dear wife's in there at the moment doing homemade sausage rolls, so they're more important than this as far as she's concerned. So, right, what I've got here is boiled warm water again, and all I'm going to do is just go over these, just tip it over them. All I'm trying to do here is just get rid of any sonic cleaning solution. You see this bubbling up? It's just some of the solution that's sort of left in the cases. Probably don't need to do this, but there you go. I just like doing it. Right, just give them a little up and down in there. Just to get all that solution out. I don't know if you can see from here these cases because when when Le, when you get virgin Lepore cases you can see the annealing marks around around the shoulder and the neck it's sort of it's like a bluey color where they've been annealed but that sonic clean has got rid of that so I'm well as well as all the crap on it from you know the one shot solution. They they just look as though they've been put through uh, my tumbler. No, they've come up really well. So I'm I'm, I'm not going to even tumble these because they look really good. Right. So next, I've sort of given them a wash round just to clean the insides of the cases out. I'm then. I'm going to get a clean baking tray here and two clean dishcloths. I'm just going to give this one a shake out just to make sure there's no fluff or anything in there because we don't want anything going inside the cases. And then what I'll do is I'll take these out like so. Let so that drain a bit. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this again, give myself a bit of space. Move that back there. I'll just have a look through the camera to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then I'm going to tip these out. I'm not going to chuck them about, I'm just doing it quite softly because I don't, I've just done all these necks and they're all nice and prepped, so I don't want to go mad with them because I don't want to sort of put little dinks in the, in the necks and stuff. So, and then I'll make a little cradle up with this. 
like so. Hold the ends and then I'll just go backwards and forwards with this. Like I say, I'm not going mad because I don't want to chip those those necks. They're quite robust anyway, so they you could probably go a little bit more mad than this, but this is how I do it anyway. This is just to tip any water, any sort of mate, if there's a lot of water in one of the cases. So I'm just doing this off a bit. Okay, right, that's plonking there. And then I'll get the other dishcloth, give that a shake. Plonk that on there. So it's nice and dry. Tip these onto that. Okay. Just flatten them out a little bit. And basically what I do now is I'll just when I'll, I'll flatten them out um, after after the vid, I'll um I'll just I'll just lay this over like so, like that, and then they go in the airing cupboard, and I'll leave them in there overnight. They don't need to be in there that long, but it's a it's a subtle, gentle heat, so it won't do them any harm being in there longer. Um, and tomorrow they'll be all lovely and dry. So on the next vid, I'll show you what I do next. For the for the prep of everything. See you later. Hi folks, Terry again. This uh, vid five. I've cleaned all this brass, which you saw in the last video, and I've dried it out in the airing cupboard. It's still in said tray. See, so all lovely and gleamy. Sorry about the light in here. I've got I've got a window next to me, and it's really sunny outside. You won't believe, but I've got props up against it to stop all this glare but I've done the best I can so there you go right so I'm going to push this tray a little bit out of the way and show you what I'm going to do next and that is to prime these little babies and what I use to do that is the Lee Auto Prime XR hand priming tool uh, this is for uh, small primers because obviously 223 they use small primers and like something like a 308, you'd use large primers. These are small rifle primers. Uh, if you you can interchange and put the large primer um, units on this hand unit. Um, this is a shell holder for a 223, um, which isn't the same sort of shell holder that's in in a press. You have to buy this shell holder to go with this auto prime. Now the reason I use a hand one is because I, I like I like to feel the primer going into the brass and seating because you can you can feel it going in with this handle as, as you're pushing it in and I prefer that because I can I can feel it just bottom out and as soon as it's bottom out bottomed out I stop whereas if you're doing it on a press you've got a le lot of leverage going on here and you, you can't feel you can't feel properly. Well, I, I like, I like, I just like to feel them seating properly. So, okay. So what I'm going to do first is pop the cover off of this. There's a cover, clear cover that goes on top of it. And excuse the um, no, oh, kinky gloves by the way. I've got the, I've got this on because I'm going to be touching the brass now after it's been cleaned, and I, I just don't want to get grease from my fingers all over it because. What's the point of cleaning them all up like this on the outside if you just start putting finger grease and whatever onto them and it start tarnishing them again? So from now on, right the way to the end, after you know the sort of the re reloading the powder stage and everything, I'm only going to touch them with these. Okay. So I've taken the cover off of this. I'll just put this here for a moment. I use Federal small rifle match primers um, I've had no problems with them they're really good so this is what I use now how you load this up is you take these primers out of the box and they're on a little tray like this 
And what you do is you turn this, obviously without the lid on, upside down, and this square box here fits perfectly inside. You hold it and just turn it over and all the primers drop out onto the top of the tray here. Now what we want is the open side of the primer, the part that ignites, in other words not the smooth side, we want the open side facing upwards. So we want all these facing upwards. So how you do that is you just tap, you just tap this, and I don't know if you can see, but they're just little taps and they're flicking over onto the right side. Don't know how, how it works like that, but it works. Okay, right, all of those hundred primers are now sitting the right way up. You then put the cover back on, and it just slides on and clips in place, which you'll hear, that's one, two, right, that's in. Now, you move all these down to the side, and there's a little, little channel here, and they feed themselves, basically, so you get them moving down into the channel. I'm just going to stand up for a minute so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now, let's just get one to pop in. Okay, once you've got your first one in there, they'll carry on loading themselves. You get your case, put your case in the shell holder. Now this is important. When you're doing this, never have this case facing your face, okay? because there's a very, very slim chance, but still a chance all the same, that that primer could go off when you're doing this. I've never had it, and I've loaded hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, but it can happen. Again, this is stuff I've seen on, online, people saying it's happened to them. Um, it's very freakish, but it can happen, okay? And when you're seating these primers, do it gently. Don't whack them in really hard, because at the end of the day it's sort of acting like a a fat firing pin if you like if you're going to bang it in there it's going to set them off so just nice and easy so that's located in there I then start to push this handle down and how we want it to go in is just just like that and you can I can just feel it bottomed out there release the handle okay now the neck when I take this out that primer seated lovely in there and what you want to make sure is it's below the surface of the bottom of the case you don't below or flush you, you don't want it above it's got to be level with or below because that can start all sorts of problems and that one's just below which is perfect so it's bottomed out it's all the way down that's that's ready so I'll put that one over here and well you can't see but I can the next one has just fed itself in there automatically next one in to start the handle nice and slow once it's starting to engage again point away slowly push in there she's bottomed out so you can feel it and I like I like to feel that okay same again, that's in, again it's below which is perfect, you don't want them proud I'll say again, that's number two, yep, next one's dropped in, number three, in, nice and smoothly and easily because we've uniformed all these pockets so there shouldn't be much resistance at all. Again, check each one of these that they're below or flush, nothing above. It's loaded itself again. I'll do two more. Okay, one. It's below again. It's loaded itself. 
Right, the last one for video purposes. In she goes. Lovely, nice and easy. A bit of resistance, but nothing, nothing you can't do just with your thumb, okay? Again, that's below. If ever you're putting your primers in and you're finding yourself forcing it because it's just jamming up, it's not, don't, don't wrench this thing in, okay? If that's, if it's not going in, basically with the pressure that you can exert with, with your thumb, then something's, something's wrong. E either something's wrong in the primer pocket in the case and it's jamming up, but just, just stop. Don't force it because again, you're, you're, you're going to start crushing that primer and we don't want any ignitions, okay? Even if it's pointing away from you, you still, you, you don't want to do it. Because out of the end of the case, if that did go off, you'd have all little bits of shrapnel fly out. Which is why you don't hold it in front of your face when you're doing it. Because you, you, you'd end up blind, basically. Um, because it is an explosive that you're putting in there, basically. So if you just follow those sort of guide, rough guidelines, what I'm saying, you'll, you, you'll be okay. Right, I think that's about it on this bit. Yeah, so I'll get all these done, and then next time you see me, we'll be putting charges in these cases and put putting the um, bullets in. Okay, so next time, see you soon. Bye. Right, just one more thing I forgot to mention to you about priming these cases. Once you've got your primers in them, even if the powder isn't in them, it's just the primers, okay? Primers in the cases. They're considered live ammunition, basically. So if you're not going to load them with powder at the, sort of straight after you've done this, don't just put them in a bag or whatever and put them in, in your cupboard or drawer or anything like that because they need to go in your ammo safe because they're they're classed now as as a live round potentially so i just thought i'd let you know that because i thought that's very important you know don't 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 think putting the powder in and then the bullets in it then it's considered you know it's got to be locked away i've been told that that's considered a live round so from now on these cases have to be stored in your gun cabinet or your ammo cabinet and, and lots away from now on just as you would with a, a live fully loaded round okay see you for the next bit hi folks vid six and this one's going to be awkward because i'm going to move the camera all over the place so this is going to be fun this one but i'll try my best this is the third go at it by the way because of getting the camera right and everything right this vid's all about loading powder and your bullet heads, sort of like the final stage. Now I, I did some load development um, before I decided on grainage of powder, what powder, what bullet tips to use, um, not bullet tips, bullets, um, and I'm, I've settled with this one because it's basically the best out of the, the ones that I tried three different powders um, and yeah, I found I found the one that's bang on, the one that's shone out of all of them, and they'd all be different out of different guns because every every gun likes different food, if you like. Um, you can have the same model of gun and rifle, and one would like one powder more than the other, i.e., tighter groups. Um, so I'm not going to go into all that um, load development stuff, but I'll just tell you basically what I'm settled on and that is I've got fi Nosler 55 grain ballistic tips they're my bullets the powder I use is Varget and with all the load development and I've done a lot of it because of uh, my good friend Bob who I do quite a bit of shooting with um, he's cr he chronoed everything as well we've done chrono testing and yeah, the, the, so thanks to Bob, by the way. 
And right, so this was the group that I settled on because it, it was just it was better than the others. So I don't know if you can see this properly, but for, I know it's not in the centre, but we're not we're not worrying about that. We're we're because I, I hadn't zeroed it in perfectly. It was just the groups we were looking for. So I mean that's five shots, that is. And I don't know. Well, there, 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 there's my little finger, you know, touching the paper here. I'm not doing all this or whatever. If, if I just put my little finger over the tip of my finger over it, you, you know, you can see it's sort of little, little fingernail size, sort of little group. That's and that's a uh, hundred yards. So that's fine with me. So let's plonk that over there. Right, so we've done bullets, powder, just going through my head, just remembering everything. Um, right, time for these. Look intelligent, yeah? Okay, I'll put them on in a minute, but I'm just going to move this camera around to show you what I'm doing with my powder thrower. I've set everything up here, I'm not going to go through setting up the powder thrower, setting up the scales, setting setting up the uh, bullet seating die because everything's set up exactly how I want it. I'll, I'll be here all night explaining all this lot. So um, I'll, I'll just run this bit through with you. So I'm going to move this camera, phone camera, over here just so you can see the powder thrower and what I'm doing with it. So just bear with me because I've got to balance this thing on all sorts of bits and pieces. Right, I'm hoping you can sort of see my powder thrower here. This is a, a Reading powder thrower, or powder measure they call it. And it's a match grade model 3BR. So it says on the box. And it is very good. Okay, glasses on. Tray. What I do is I hold the tray, I put the finger under the under the tray on the bottom, and I hold it up against where the powder comes out. Okay, and then we just go up, down, in just a smooth motion, and then I move the tray away, and the powder comes out. If you have the tray below here, when the powder comes out, it full it goes into the little tray, and the bits fly out. So if you hold it up tight against the bottom of this and then slowly release it it all stays in here right so next I'm putting this on my scales over here okie dokie you can see the scales right I'm just right we need a little bit little bit in here now you can just use your powder thrower straight into your case. So in other words, you put your case up under here, throw the powder, job done, put your case back over here, and you you, you can avoid weighing it again. But I, I always weigh it, because even though this is a really good powder thrower, top quality one, you're still a literally a few grains here and there it hardly make any difference but as, as you know I've said I just like to get things as close to bang on as I can so using this takes away a lot of the flapping around with the hang on let me find them you know finding the right scoop and all this business this is quicker Okay, so I'm look I'm looking at where we are and we need a bit more in there. So I've I've got an RCBS trickler, powder trickler here set up. So I'm just gonna just bear with me while I trickle this in till I've got it where I want it on the scales. Right, that is bang on, which is where it should be. 
funnel. Obviously, put it on your case. Let's see, let's get the tray first off of here. Funnel on the case and tip her in sort of nice and just like that. Give her a little tap just to make sure everything's in there. That's fine. I'll just put that over there for the moment and that there. Right, now I'm going to move you again in a minute so you can see me put the bullet in that case, okay? So just let me move this again. Okay. Like I say, I've, I've set this bullet seating die up to the exact overall length um, from the base of the bullet. This is an empty one, by the way. From the base to the tip of the the actual bullet the the overall length has all been set up on here I've already done it um, again you've, you've got to be careful with this bit with my particular rifle which is a Seiko 85 Varmin you know the stainless barreled one um, I, I, I do the length of these the overall length so they fit just just fit into my magazine, okay? Um, because I'm governed by the length of my magazine on this, I could make them longer if I single fed them and didn't put them in the magazine so that they'd be um, nearer the rifling, the ogive, or the land, should I say. But I'm, I'm governed by this, and it doesn't, so I know I'm, I'm, I'm back, back a little bit from the rifling, so, but all rifles are different, okay? So I'm doing this, these measurements just for my Seiko 85. And I, again, I'm not gonna give you the measurements because I haven't got them on me at the moment, but you know, every, everyone's different. So that bit you'll have to work out for yourself. Okay, so what we do, we've got our bullet that we just put the powder in, in the shell holder. No, just rest her on top. And just slowly feed her into the die. Okay, now you don't want to whack this down again, you just got to want to go nice and slowly. So what I do is I go all the way down, just bottom down, that's fine. Bring her back. Now again, I give it half a turn. And I'll just push her down again. Okay. Now that half a turn, this is what I was trying to explain in, in, in my previous video when I was neck sizing these, the half a turn business. It can help lessen run out on the on the bullet, okay? It's it's just um it's just a better way of doing it. Um, I haven't got run out gauges and you know stuff like that. Not because I don't believe in them, but because I haven't. Um, basically, they're not cheap, um, and you can only get you know so much stuff at once. Um, it's something that I will get eventually, and I can sort of test all these exactly. But you know, this this is as good as you can get without one really. So that one's done. That goes next to that one. Yeah, so basically, that's that procedure out the way. Um, following this, I'm just I just want to talk about some stuff about you know sort of all all the videos I've done and a couple of things I forgot to say in some of them. Um, I just wanted to go over. Um, and if I've forgotten anything in this one as well, which I probably have or haven't explained something properly, and I can see it. Um, I'll, I'll put that on the end of a separate video. So, yeah, take care. Speak to you soon.
Okay, folks, after video um, vid, um, which I promised, uh, there's just a few things I just want to go over first. Uh, firstly, bolts open, okay? Gun safe. I've uh, put a few points down on this piece of paper so I don't forget, just to go over a few things. Uh, these are obviously the 200 rounds that I, um, that I loaded that you saw me load. Um, put your stickers on your bullet cases and write everything down on there. The, the date, the bullet type, the powder type, the case type, the primer type, the grain of, of a bullet, uh, the weighting grains of powder, um, the overall length of the loaded bullet which in which in my case is the length of the magazine which I discussed with you um, your caliber on there just put put it all on write it all down on the sticker so it's all there for reference and I've I've got a sticker on both of these so I can refer to that when, whenever I need to reload them again I've got all my information there so we don't get muddled up Okay, right, the first thing I just wanted to mention was um, when I was doing the uniforming the primer pockets and the flash holes, I was doing it very softly. I, I wasn't really ramming it in there because I've just looked back at the video and it, it looks like, oh, cool, he's giving that a bit on the primer, primer pockets, but I'm not. I'm just floating it in there and very gently doing it. Okay, that's, um, that's one point. Um, the Lee Clark, uh, sorry, the Lee Cast Press insert inserts that go in the top of the press. It's hidden behind my rifle, but it's that. I forgot the name of them, um, and I've got, or the proper name of them, should I say? They are called Lee Breech Lock Bushings, and they come in packs of two. Now I got a couple of packs of these um, because obviously I wanted to put one on each of my dies um, so I don't have to change them around, you know, the, take the insert off of one die and put it on the next. So I, I, got, I got a few packs of these so I've got one on each die basically. Okay. I referred to a primed case um, being referred to as a loaded round. It also contributes to the amount of ammo that you're allowed to keep. Let's just say you're allowed 200 um, 223s in, in your cabinet. That's what they've allowed you. If you, had, if you were down to your last... 100 and you loaded 100 cases sorry let's say 125 cases with primers in and put them in your cupboard you'd then be 50 rounds over what you should be and that can get you in a lot of trouble and lose your license simply because you didn't you, you didn't know so just just i just wanted to clarify that right what's next when i do did my powder throwing um, you'll, you'll notice I, I, I said to do a smooth motion with the handle. Uh, when On one of the motions, you'll notice that the lever stuck a little bit and then carried on. And that's because Varget powder is a stick powder, if you like, the tiny little sticks. And sometimes one of the sticks is still sticking up when the drum comes round. So the drum actually just sort of cuts the stick in half. Hence that little jerky bit. Um, yeah, I noticed that as well, so I just thought I'd pop that in. Now, anything to do with um, reloading, if you're starting out, I mean, we, we, we've we all got to start from somewhere. Uh, just never be afraid to ask anyone, you know, well, an experienced reloader, any question about reloading before, before you attempt it. Um, you know, the... They're good fellas, and, and you know, we, like I say, we've all got to start somewhere, and a bit of good advice goes a long way. And um, what I used to do as well is on on YouTube, 
I used to watch a lot of um, reloading videos on YouTube and it's surprising, it's almost like going back to school. You, you, I get transfixed with them, or I, I did to start with, it's like learning all these different things. Um, I learnt everything I need, needed to know primarily about my 223, you know, the make of the 223, the ballistics of it, and I concentrated on that. I'm not trying, you know, I'm not trying to, and, and I don't know, far from it, um, everything about all different rifles and, and whatnot. Um, I just studied the rifle I was going to get and I, and I got all my information before I got it. So I, I knew, knew what I was doing with it. Um, so that's another little, little bit of advice. Um, do your homework. If, if you're putting in for a variation for, for, for whatever rifle, just make sure you find out as much as you can about it before before you get it. Um, and like I say, don't be afraid to ask, because we, I say again, we all start from somewhere. Right. If you've got any questions about what, what you've seen in my video, I'll, I'll try and answer them. Tr try and answer all of them, should I say. And um, yeah, I've ho I hope you've in enjoyed the video. I've, I've enjoyed making it. It's sort of, um, I, I don't know, it's it's a bit catchy and I just wanted to get on to the next bit. Um, so, yeah, please like and subscribe as well. And I've got some actual shooting videos out there. Um, if you subscribe and go to my homepage, you'll, you'll, you'll see those as well. There's um, uh, a bit of foxing, quite a bit of foxing on there as well that has um, been done with this, this rifle. Um, with these loads or, and the loads before them. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it and, um, and take care. See you then.